This video is going to continue working on putting together the pieces that we're going to need to solve non-homogeneous linear equations. But first, we're going to fill in the next gap by answering the question, how do we solve homogeneous linear equations? with constant coefficients. And really, the way we're going to do it is very similar to what we did with second order differential equations. So let's expand that theory up to any higher ordered differential equations. So what we're really doing is solving equations of the form some constant times the nth derivative of y plus another constant times the next derivative of y plus so on and so forth all the way down until we get the second constant times the second derivative plus the first constant times the first derivative and then some constant times the function y itself and it's going to be equal to zero because we're working with homogeneous linear equations. And the key here is that all of those a sub n's, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, and so on to a sub 2, a sub 1, and a sub 0, all of those are constants. In other words, they're just numbers. If we've got a homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients like this, pretty much we have three cases that we need to account for. We are going to solve the characteristic equation Remember, the characteristic equation was the d squared and the d that we were replacing the y double prime and the y prime with for the roots r sub i. And there's three cases that can come out of this. First, where we get real and distinct roots. Maybe r equals 2 and negative 7. They're real and they're distinct. The second is complex and distinct. Maybe they're 2 plus or minus 3i. And the other option is we could end up with repeated roots. And those repeated roots could be real repeated roots or complex repeated roots. And to set these up, we're going to look at all three of these cases individually in various examples. So first, what we're going to do is look at the case where we've got real and distinct roots. Those roots are going to be r1, r2, and so on, all the way up to rn. If we have those roots, they give solutions. And we've seen this before with the second order differential equations that y is equal to the first constant times e to the first root times x plus the second constant times e to the second root times x and so on and so forth until we get to the nth constant and e to the nth root times x. So for example if we've got the third derivative of y minus the second derivative of y minus 20 times the first derivative of y is equal to 0. Well, we can change this to the characteristic equation d cubed minus d squared minus 20d equals 0 
and solve the resulting equation. First by factoring out a d, leaving behind d squared minus d minus 20 equals 0. And then factoring to d minus 5 times d plus 4. And so our characteristic equation, our distinct roots, are that d is equal to 0, 5, and negative 4. Which means our y complement, or the homogeneous solution for y, is equal to c1 times e to the 0, which is just 1, plus c2 e to the 5x, plus c3 e to the negative 4x. And so this is really an extension of what we saw with the second order differential equations. We're just going to have higher powers on our characteristic equation. So that's probably not a very interesting example. Let's look though at what happens when we have repeated real roots. Let's say we've got a repeated root of r. Then the problem is, is if we have an r and an r, our equation would be y equals c1 e to the rx plus c2 e to the rx, because r was repeated, it's there twice. The problem is, is these two functions, e to the rx, are not linearly independent. In fact, they're both exactly the same. And so we need to make them linearly independent. And the way we do that is we multiply by an x. And if it was repeated three times, we would multiply by x squared. And we would just keep going, multiplying by x to the n minus 1, e to the rx. And that would give us each individual term is actually linearly independent. And you can run these through the run scan if you want to test them to see if they're actually linearly independent. But let's take a look at an example. Let's do the sixth derivative of y minus 10 times the fifth derivative of y plus 25 times the fourth derivative of y is equal to 0. Well, if we change that to the characteristic equation, we've got the sixth derivative, or d to the sixth, minus 10 times the fifth derivative plus 25 times the fourth derivative is equal to 0. And we can solve this by factoring out d to the fourth, leaving behind d squared minus 10d plus 25. Continuing to factor, we get d minus 5 squared equals 0, which means d equals 0 and 5. But not only that, the 0 is repeated four times, and the 5 is repeated two times. There's actually six solutions in here. So when we write out our equation for y, the solution to this homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficients, we'll start with c1 times e to the 0. But we need e to the 0 four times. So for the second time, we'll have an x. For the next time, we'll have an x squared. And for the next time, we'll have an x cubed. And notice that gives us four linearly independent solutions for the d equals 0 case. For the d equals 5, we've got c5 e to the 5x. But we need a second linearly independent solution. So it's going to be c6x e to the 5x. And so the way we create these linearly independent individual solutions is we multiply by x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, and so on, until we end up with enough of our repeated roots.
Okay, we haven't talked about the complex case yet, so let's do that next. Complex roots always come in pairs. Essentially, a plus or minus bi, which will give the solution y equals e to the ax, that's from the real part, and from the complex part we're going to get our first constant times the cosine of the bx plus c2 times the sine of the bx. Let's take a look at a couple examples of this working out. Let's look at the fourth derivative of y minus 81y equals 0. Well, the fourth derivative of y is written as d to the fourth minus 81 equals 0 in our characteristic equation. And when we factor this, we get d squared minus 9 times d squared plus 9 equals 0. d squared minus 9 is d plus 3 times d minus 3 times the d squared plus 9 equals 0. And if we set each of these equal to 0, we find out d is equal to negative 3, positive 3. And if I subtract 9 and take the square root, we end up with a plus or minus 3i, because the square root of the negative 9 is going to be 3i. To make our solution to the homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficients, we say y is equal to c1 e to the negative 3x plus c2 e to the 3x. That's the same as we've seen before. But now, for the complex part, it's going to be plus e to the ax. Notice there was nothing in no real part to this solution. So it's actually e to the 0, which is 1. So I'm going to drop that off. And so we'll have c3 cosine of the 3x plus c4 sine of the 3x. And that becomes our solution to our first example. Let's do one more example to really practice with these complex solutions. Let's try doing y double prime, or the second derivative of y, minus 4 times the first derivative of y plus 13y equals 0. The characteristic equation is d squared minus 4d plus 13 equals 0. We could try and factor this. The problem is, is it does not factor very nicely. So we can either complete the square or use the quadratic formula to say d is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Simplifying as I go on, we get 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 52 is negative 36 all over 2 which gives us 4 plus or minus 6i over 2. Dividing everything by 2, we get 2 plus or minus 3i for our solutions. Since it's complex, we know it's going to be e to the ax, in this case 2x, times the first constant times the cosine of 3x plus the second constant times the sine of the 3x. 
and this becomes our general solution to the homogeneous linear second order differential equation with constant coefficients. Now sometimes we do end up with repeated complex roots and the idea is the same that we used before for the repeated real roots. If we have repeated complex roots, let's say we've got a plus bi and it's squared, it's been repeated. Well, we'll start it off exactly the same. We'll start with e to the ax times our first constant times the cosine of the bx plus the second constant times the sine of the bx. And then we need to add to it a linearly independent pair of solutions for the repeated roots. Again, the way we do that is we're going to multiply the e to the ax by an x to make it linearly independent. And then we would have c3 times the cosine of bx plus c4 sine of 3x bx. Sorry. So to set this up, I'm going to save us having to factor something as big and ugly as this. Let's just say the roots of a characteristic equation are 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, it's repeated, 4 plus or minus 5i, 4 plus or minus 5i, again repeated, and 0. Well, let's start listing our roots. First, we've got the 2. We know that's going to be c1 e to the 2x. Plus, for the negative 3, it's going to be c1 e to the negative 3x. For the repeated root, it's going to be, it should have been c2, sorry, c3 times x e to the negative 3x. And c4 times x squared e to the negative 3x. Then we've got the complex root, so we'll say plus e to the 4x times, we're on c5, cosine of the 5x plus c, we were on c5, so now we're on c6, sine of 5x, going on to the second line here. Plus, we've got a repeated complex root, so we'll multiply by x on the e to the 4x to make it linearly independent. And then we've got c7 cosine of 5x plus c8 sine of 5x. And finally, we're up to c9 for our ninth solution times e to the 0x, which just becomes... 1, so we end up with just c9, and this big ugly thing then becomes the solution to the homogeneous equation with constant coefficients that has these solutions to the characteristic equation. You're starting to see we're using the same patterns over and over again as we develop kind of our general strategy for attacking these. We want you to get very comfortable with this general strategy as we try and bring it all together in our future videos. So now it's your turn to practice. Go ahead and give it a try. We'll see you in class.